kelp forests. For many who live in the Bay Area, kelp is a symbol of the ocean right next door. It is used in movies that are placed in or based around the Monterey Bay. When going to the beach, it is not uncommon to find swatches of kelp washed up there, seemingly ruining your fun. Its entire purpose seems to be to grow, die, and wash up on the beaches of Santa Cruz and Monterey. However, what most people don't know is how important it is in our everyday lives and how it is under attack. Kelp is used in many different products. Also known as algin, kelp and kelp-based products can be found in our everyday life. They are used as cooling agents in ice creams and puddings, ensuring that they stay nice and creamy. They are even used in toothpastes and pottery. It is because of these factors that the loss of the kelp forest is so impactful and concerning. Since the beginning of 2014, scientists started to notice a loss in the terms of the number of kelp that there was in the kelp forests around California. But just like with every ecosystem, there are a number of factors that are causing this drastic drop in the kelp forest. What almost all the problems center around, though, is the rising population of the spiny cousin of the starfish, the sea urchin. If there is a lot of organic material on the bottom, like there was around, um, around Dana Point and White's Point, the, um, that organic material will support little tiny sea urchins. And then they'll grow up, and then they'll but it is not just the abundance of resources to support their growth that is allowing the sea urchin population to grow. There are plenty of other factors to consider, especially the reduction of those playing on them. An excellent example of this happened in the early 1900s, when the southern sea otters were hunt almost hunted to extinction for their beautiful pelts. So the reason the otters disappeared was because people hunted them. They were pretty easy targets because they were always laying around and stuff like that, and their pelts were warm and waterproof. So basically, um, otters are what we call keystone species, and they eat a lot of different animals, including sea urchins. Um, and they're actually one of the primary predators of them. The thing is, sea urchins eat kelp. And so when we eliminated one of the top predators of them, the sea urchin population went out of control, and as a result, they started eating up all the kelp forests. And the thing is, is that all of a sudden our kelp forests started disappearing, and we had no idea why. And we finally realized by seeing so many urchins down there, that it was the urchins that were causing that, and we had to figure out what was causing the urchin population to like, get so huge, and we realized it was because of the lack of sea otters. All right. There are still a couple of barrens today that are left over from this tragedy in the 1900s. However, as if by a miracle, a raft of 50 southern sea otters was discovered in Big Sur, just south of Monterey Bay in 1938. Through a lot of hard work and assistance, the otter population grew and spread to cover the coast of California. All of the otters that can be seen dwelling in the Monterey Bay are descendants of that original group of 50. Today, just as in the early 1900s, we are seeing similar effects on the kelp forest and urchin population. One of the major factors seems to be, again, the removal of a, of a major predator. This time, though, it is not the sea otter, but the sea star. The sea star populations have been hit recently by a disease that is cutting down their numbers drastically. The sea star wasting syndrome. This disease has horrible and horrific effects on at least 20 different species of sea stars. Once a sea star has contracted this disease, their bodily tissues will start to degrade. Much like leprosy in humans, the sea star's arms will start to fall off once enough tissue has been degraded. At first glance, it seems as if the sea star wasting syndrome was the sole cause of all the kelp disappearing. But it soon became clear that this was not the only reason. So the wasting disease caused the removal of a lot of sea stars in uh, the area of the Hopkins Marine Station. And since they've gone, the, the mussels have not extended downward, which would be what you would think had happened if the sea stars were responsible for keeping the mussel boundary. Right? So here's another one of those complicated marine systems that there's probably a number of different things going on. It soon became clear that there really isn't one obvious reason for the disappearance of the kelp forest. What I, was, what I was trying to convince you of is that there's no major cause that you can identify, like, um, you know, Sam Wilson didn't go step on a sea urchin and that started the whole thing, right? This is a complicated system that's made up of a whole bunch of different organisms. And to really understand it, you have to understand how all those different organisms interact. It is not clear right now exactly what started the kelp forest disappearance due to a number of factors in this complicated ecosystem. 
But what is clear, however, is that if the cause is not found, this ecosystem, home to over 500 animals, will soon be gone.